Greetings, Jedi traders. David here of TradingFibs.com to bring you the technical momentum outlook for week 39 of 2017. Hey guys, as always, please seek financial advisement when trading with your money as these videos are for educational purposes only to support your knowledge in the market. See what's going through my head on any given day or week. And always make sure you have a solid trading plan and always manage your stop when placing a trade. All right, good to see you, Jedi Traders. Uh, week 39, we just uh, finished up week 38. Let's uh, actually get to some of the charts in week 38 to kind of just give a technical momentum trend of where we're at, and then we'll jump in uh, to some of the charts and give the big picture of where uh, we sit currently uh, as we roll into the end of Q3 here for the year. Let's take a look at the ES charts as we see uh, the evidence here, price action for week uh, 38, pretty much uh, was still holding above that trend on the 10 period moving average. We could see we absolutely tested that uh, on a daily chart as we could see uh, most of the moving averages in sync, but we do have a cross here of the SMA, the simple moving average over the weighted moving average. Again, a weighted moving average could be a preferred uh, moving average for some, gives a little bit of a better curve uh, into uh, price action change. But regardless, uh, majority of the moving average is still holding up on the S. As we can see, we just closed once again after breaching that 2,500. Go back to technical momentum outlook for last week. You could see I was looking for that zone up there. We actually uh, got up here and uh, just held within a tick of that 2500 off the 10 EMA. Taking a, a look at, let's see if we could scroll here. Yeah, there we go. ES Weekly, we could see price action on the MMLs, the Murray Math Levels. Again, we watch these on a bigger time frame. We watch them on a smaller time frame, uh, intraday. But on the bigger time frame, you could take a step back, take a look at uh, the big picture here from post election and uh, the momentum that's been all upside. We uh, are showing some consolidation here once again, as we did back here in the end of uh, Q1, Q2, a nice move up through Q2, Q3. So we're back at the same short term uh, MML here. We have a Murray math level drawn inside the bigger picture. So the bigger picture is right up here, up to 2519. So we have two levels sitting inside each other. So obviously resistance. What we'd like to see is we'd like to see price action break up above 2519.50, and then we'd love to see it drop back down, close below 2500, and then we got ourselves uh, a momentum downside. But again, that plays into bigger pictures of uh, different things that I look at, including my T3 moving averages crossing over in sync with the 534. So a variety of other things I might be looking at, but just keeping it simple, we can see we're obviously at the resistance high. So I'm looking up to 2519 all the way up to 58 at this point. Uh, until we go any further, we'll have a redraw. But right now, current momentum, obviously two weeks now, consolidation right at the resistance on the ES. All right, that's the daily. So let's drop it down. Look at week 38. As you can see, we got a little bit of consolidation. We ended up with a Heikinashi Doji bar, which means indecision. We could see we were hanging up at the MML highs. We had FO FOMC announcement. Uh, this last week. Uh, the minutes obviously will eventually come out, but right now price action uh, pulled back uh, there midweek and pretty much dropped down, but we got uh, a lift off the 60 minute, oversold, and uh, that obviously was in sync with the 10 EMA, and right back upside, there it is, 2,500. So on the short term, again, the 60 minute can reset a little bit faster than the rest of the mo uh, MML levels. Right now we could see price action uh, any return back up to the highs will be 2505. We could see we did have a setup on the 60 minute up here this week, which uh, was an absolute beautiful move to the downside. Obviously, regained right back upside the next day as the uh, most of the indices uh, took back that move down on Wednesday and uh, price action eventually uh, pulled back through the remainder of the week. So there we are, 50% pullback. Uh, we'll take a look at some other charts to see where might that be headed in the bigger picture. All right, take a look at the ETF on the SPY. We could see price action again in consolidation, both at a daily and a weekly up here at the 250 level. We'll be looking up to 250.98 on the SPY before any pullback might occur. 
But again, all moving averages in sync, uh, both 50s in the short term, 89 EMA as well, 200 SMA well below. Hey, let's jump into some of the other ETFs that we watch here. Again, total stock market index still holding upside. Again, up here, a little consolidation up in the resistance zone. Want to pay attention to this because right now we have a stock, uh, an MML setup here as price action broke 128.91. You want to watch for the move below 128.13 here. Price action breaks down on a trend, even though the momentum is up here on the 534 and uh, the 5144. Uh, any pullback will watch to the 50 period moving average over here around 126.80. Anything lower will go to the major support resistance. So something to watch this week, though, with Q3 rolling out, I'm not so sure that uh, momentum is going to pull back. But hey, I'm not in control of that. If price action does start to pull down, that's what you would want to be looking for. So right now, a little bit of caution at the MML highs. Again, obviously, the entry all the way back here was the key timing. But uh, right now, we'll have to see what happens up here at the MML high. Still momentum uh, upside. Take a look at the transports. We've been watching the transports ETF for some weeks now. We saw this consolidation inside the moving averages. Now on the breakout of the major support resistance and the 50 period moving average. Now you can see the breakout upside here has been holding up. I drew uh, a couple other time frames in. This is a 200 tick range chart. All right. 200 tick giving us a longer span or a, a longer span of time. Obviously, we hit it up here. We came back down. We prefer for price action to break above the resistance high. Not necessarily all the time that happens. So perhaps you miss the move down, and as well as the move back up. And then, but that would also mean you'd want to be looking on a smaller time frame as well. But regardless, we do have multiple time frames. I threw up a four-hour and a sixty-minute here. Uh, interlaced here with the bigger time frame on the 200 tick chart you can see we have multiple levels here in different shades all with resistance at 175 here so we hit the resistance on the transports we'll want to see price action lift a little bit higher perhaps all the way from 175 78 all the way up here to uh maybe 176 56 see what price action right now transports at least with the 534 crosser crossover is in a definite pullback and momentum holding upside as the moving averages are holding upside as well. All right, we know energy sector has been in a downtrend. We're monitoring the pullback as crude oil has been uh, getting a nice lift. So price action off the resistance low after uh, move down. We see the moving averages still holding downside. Price action on the short term MML off the support to the resistance right here, 67.19. Uh, Again, the target would be all the way up here, 68.75 on the HA bar still trending up which would uh come right smack into the 200 sma so we'll watch energy in the week to come so obviously the short-term mml is just to give you a time frame of where the resistance might be for the smaller pick but the bigger pick we're still looking upside here to 68.75 all right taking a look at the financials financials after a pullback thinking Financials were going to be coming down to the MML lows. Obviously, you got to watch some of those key moving averages as the momentum, for the most part, on the financials still on this pullback was in an uptrend. Take a look at the third bar downside. That's the 5144 that I watch on an intraday. Well, I just used a little bit of higher time frame on the bigger picture, and you could see we were still in the green. So this was merely a pullback to around major support resistance, 200 and bang, right back upside on some multiple MML drives. Again, the bigger picture is the longer draw from side to side here. All right. As you can see, the bars over here side to side. <clears throat> the smaller MML is just to give you some guidance where short term resistance might be during the week uh, as uh, price action moves. And uh, here we can see we got a uh, smaller time frame here. And uh, I apologize on the range charts. That's not a 60 minute, uh, it's just a smaller time frame. Uh, based on square width. And so uh, here we go. Uh, if this is 64, for instance, I don't go higher than 64. This might be a 32 and this might be a 16. And so that's what I'd be looking at. So right here, again, we're back up to the familiar level here on the overbought. We want to be looking for price action to see if it holds here. All right, that would be good. Any breakdown below 25, we'd start to look back downside. So we'll monitor that during the week. So again, definitely resistance. Again, price uh, action on the 
uh, financials continues to break upside, we'll be looking up to the next level up here on the resistance up here at 2578. Definitely momentum in the green. So I got to go with the probability that we might be headed higher on the financial ETS. All right, taking a look at the tech industry. We saw the N, we will be looking at the NQ. We know the NQ to be struggling right now. Uh, pullback, but uh, consolidation here on the tech ETF up at the MML highs. Again, we've already bypassed the uh, longer big picture on the 64 square width. So we're looking at the smaller time, uh, smaller square width up here. Again, definitely consolidation. But as I look downside, 5144 and the 534s were all still in the green. So momentum still remains upside as uh, we hold above the key moving averages. So that is one uh, uh, ETF will follow obviously week to week. And right now, just in a holding pattern. Taking a look at the uh, dollar, obviously uh, the focus on the dollars. Uh, some of those uh, investor traders wanting that dollar to move up, maybe signifying a drop in the stock market. But uh, dollar versus emerging markets, we could see we do have an MML short term off the lows. We'll be looking up to 2461 as we would break through these uh, former year lows. Uh, we'll have to watch as that comes, but uh, obviously still. Not a lot of momentum. This is obviously the ETF on the dollar as uh, we want to see it come back up here to 2461 before if it came back downside. Emerging markets again struggling up here at the resistance high 2014 high. Uh, again, momentum still mostly upside holding above key moving averages. So I got to go with the momentum still upside. So we'll want to watch the 4531 this week. See if it breaks. That's again a daily pick. Uh, the emerging markets, again, have many open gaps. They don't play by the open gap rules on the emerging markets. So, again, just watching the MML resistance up here. Uh, we'll see next week. Maybe I'll draw a smaller time frame on there. But right now, uh, just holding pattern on the emerging markets at the high. And taking a look at the FFTY, the IBD50, again, a consensus of those strong fundamentals in the market. We did break the larger uh, square width here on the MMLs up here about 3008. We hit the reversal level. Again, if price action hits their reversal, we want to watch it come down, pull back upside, and then uh, take a move back downside. But momentum still all upside on the green. So I got to go with the momentum upside as the uh, IBD50 now hits the smaller uh, square width here on the MMLs up at the resistance. So a close above 31.64 and then uh, set up below 31.25. We'll reevaluate in the week to come. And last, Bitcoin. A lot of attention on the Bitcoin. Again, there are other uh, ways to uh, get involved in investing in Bitcoin. But here's one of the uh, Bitcoin dot usd this is uh the etf here price action again on the mmls here we can see week 38 on the pullback here from mml high to mml low support here at 35.94 okay we want to see it close a little bit below here on 35.55 to get a move back upside momentum kind of mixed here right now as we can see we're going from 534 from red to green to red but again the overall trend has been upside on the third bar downside so i gotta still Stick with Bitcoin beat upside, but again, a very volatile market uh, here. So again, we got the short term pullback off of the uh, support here in the 150. So momentum right now on the Bitcoin still upside. So you'd be wanting to watch 4375 upside. Uh, anything lower would uh, break this support level. We'd be looking down to 3125. All right, uh, let's jump into the uh, let's jump into the uh, indices and the uh, crude and the gold as we watch here on the intraday screen share. There's your ETF big pictures. Again, you have to monitor monitor those obviously on a daily basis if you're watching them. Hands in many pots, uh, obviously can uh, get you uh, spread out all over the place to try to stay focused. And so let's jump right into the indices uh, as we do each week. All right, here we are, RTY, NQ, looking on the second chart, YMES. These are our open gaps. We can see the all-time highs here. Again, bigger picture as we uh, finished out week 38 and we head into week 39. RTY making up that nice move, setting some uh, new, well, the all-time high was sitting up here on the uh, RTY with price action uh, starting the week out. Had a larger gap to fill uh, versus the other indices, the YM and the ES. And RTY did a nice job. Small caps with some nice volume. Again, that RTY, the uh, T, um, 
merging the volume over from the TF Russell is the uh, Russell with the CME will now be the uh, standard once that uh, 2018 rolls around. Got another couple contracts and then full volume will be there. But right now, RTY makes it up to the all time high. So RTY, YM and ES still momentum strong to the upside as we can see YM and ES both making some new all time highs this week, breaking up that 2500. So again, with about average volume across the board here, 60 period moving average, it's the NQ you might bound to be watching as the momentum coming down. Open gaps we definitely have on the YM and ES right downside. So <clears throat> any pullback in the market at this point, again, with Q3, I'm not so sure. Maybe in October, we'll see how the momentum turns. But right now, if any pullback occurs here in this week, it would be at least to maybe close out some of these open gaps down to 21,810. Uh, 2465 on the ES would be the shortest open gaps. Again, you have to see where those align with your moving average and any other uh, study that you might be watching. But again, open gaps sitting right down. NQ with nothing down till at least uh, 57, 22, 50. But right now, momentum on the NQ as we'll look on the charts is to the downside. RTY not down till 14.05. All right, let's jump in on the RTY here. Let's take a look at uh, on the left chart. We have the larger time frame, the 50 tick range charts. We can see we are at a momentum strong on the greens on the low. That's the 5144 and the 534 as we watch on the small intraday frame. Uh, but here we see price action again. When I say intraday, I'm talking about you know smaller time frames here where we uh, incorporate the MMLs uh, with the HA bars, T3 moving average crossover. Again, that's. That would just be the picture for a small intraday for those obviously who are into the intraday scene. But right now, uh, taking a look at the higher time frame, we're looking at a 50 tick. So bigger picture on the MMLs, we're holding upside. We had a short term resistance here. All right, take a look at the daily on the right up here. We can see we're at the MML highs, holding above uh, some key moving averages here as well. And the weekly, we're also at the MML highs. So obviously we know as the market moves up, we continue to make new highs. We'd like a reset on the MMLs, but uh, it's the range chart that uh, uses for guidance in where we are in the bigger picture. As we could see the 50 still under the 200. would love to get that 50 period above that 200 to confirm that uptrend. But uh, again, the RTY still being a young uh, index here will take some time to catch up on some of those moving average. So right now, MMLs working from their lows here. From uh, 140603, that's the breakout above the 200, working up here to 14688. Any pullback, watch the major support resistance here around 14375. Taking a look at the NQ, we know that momentum has been driving down now as price action lost it at the 10 EMA. We did find the support at the end of the session here at the 50 SMA as we uh, will roll into Globex Sunday. Price action again in between the short term MMLs. Uh, we're definitely not driving. Uh, <clears throat> we're driving down from the higher to lower here, 58, 98, 50. So that's uh, a level in the zone down here, all the way down to 69.25. You could see, obviously, the daily pulling back some. That is an MML setup downside. It has broken uh, 59.37.50. So bigger picture. If uh, we start pulling back some, we'll get down to 57.81.25. Again, weekly is going to take a lot more to change, but. Obviously, bigger picture holding up at the MML high. So right now, I got to go with the momentum probability that we might just pull back on the NQ, but it's tough. We'll have to see what the other three indices do as well. Will NQ be the leader? That's the question. But right now, momentum is downside on the NQ. So I'll be looking downside here all the way down to 69.25. Uh, obviously, open gaps much deeper. But uh, for now, if uh, price action does hold here, we'll want to see price action get back up above that 10 EMA. And then we'll start to look back up here, maybe to 60.15, up to 60.25. Taking a look at the YM, uh, obviously very much like the RTY, making a move upside. But we did get a pullback there at the end of the week or after FOMC, but found support here on the short-term MML. Not uh, coming down there at 10 AMA. We can see the green downside, all green bars indicating that we are holding upside. Uh, momentum on the daily, we like to see 22,500, which lines up here with the 50 tick. So I got to go with the momentum upside. Obviously, weekly breaking that reversal 
So any pullback would be uh, into that uh, resistance range. But right now, I got to stick with the momentum upside. So I'm looking upside here. Got to get back up to that 344, uh, 73 zone. And then anything stronger upside, we'll be looking at 22,500. And good old ES as we took a look at the weekly before 10 month uptrend, uh, almost 11 month uptrend as we uh, roll into October here. Resistance uh, up here, up 2,500. We'll be looking all the way up to 2,617, 25. But for right now, uh, definitely turn around here at 2,500 on the MMLs. I'd like to see us get above 0,975 before we make any pullback. So right now on the ES, uh, bigger picture, tough call as uh, we've had a uh, setup on the 20 tick chart. Might want to go to a higher time frame to see if we have anything uh, solid. But right now, momentum uh, still sitting upside on the S, moving averages, price action holding above. So I'll be looking up, up here to 0.975 up to 12.25, and then maybe going to a higher time frame to see uh, when that pullback comes. So ES right now still to the downside. All right, wrapping up with our last two. Crude again, making that nice move back up to the 50s. Open gap, I'm still looking up to 55. We have an open gap from several years ago. Obviously, open gap is way up to 80 bucks, even up, up above 100. But right now, short-term 55 open gap that's been sitting there. We're sitting at the resistance on the daily major support. So weekly, definitely up to 56.25, which would come in line right with that open gap. Uh, a lot of consolidations. Remember that uh, energy uh, we've been seeing on the ETFs. If you remember, let, let me pull that up. Uh, nope, that was the uh, tech industry we're looking at. So energies, again, we've been looking up here to 68.75. That's the uh, target there on the ETF. So crude, again, uh, we'll have an MML redraw most likely midweek if uh, we push any higher. But again, momentum still sitting upside here on the crude on a 50 tick chart. So I got to go with the momentum on the crude upside any pullback at this point uh down to 46.88 on a daily 48.44 would be the first uh, zone i'd be looking at but again we want to watch those moving averages for support again not a key time unless you've been sitting on some upside intraday watch for the smaller time frame gold definitely pulling back as we saw bitcoin uh get a little bit of a pullback as well uh split decision where uh, investors traders are are running here but again gold uh never made it up to the re, uh, resistance high so right now definitely gold uh, pulling back off the 50 tick chart from uh 1343 uh 0.8 as the uh, short-term fine support here 50 still sitting above the 200 but momentum on the t3s is downside so i gotta look to 1281.3 for now that would uh Maybe even put us down to the major sport resistance here at 1250. So weekly, definitely a setup. Again, I don't like the uh, move all the way up to the reversal and the change. I'd like to see a little bit of chop up in here before it pulled back. Uh, daily price action on the GT. We're moving from the lows up. To, we got to get up to 1375 before we actually pull back. So I got to go with the momentum still on the GC upside on the bigger picture. But for now, we definitely are in a pullback. So we'll be watching downside to this zone down here. Again, this is just short-term support. I like to see 1281.3, maybe even 73.4, a break of that, and then a move back upside on the daily to get us up to 1375. So definitely uh, to watch in the days to come. All right, a lot of charts to cover. I want to give you the big picture. Uh, let's roll into where are we and what's going on this week. Again, you can catch that recap in the video and any other uh, key things posted here on the technical momentum outlook for week 39. Take a look at the economic calendar as uh, we could see uh, the global as well. We got FOMC already passed us, but uh, we have the minutes of uh, Bank of Japan coming out this week couple other highlights we got fed speakers throughout the week uh we have the gdp i believe yes and we have janet yellen speaking i believe there on tuesday uh looking at uh global we have a new zealand announcement as well we have uh britain gdp coming out there on friday anything else we got japan cpi i forgot which day that is uh, there's France CPI, but yeah, we got a whole host of data there on Thursday. So watch Thursday to be data heavy and, uh, that should be it. End of Q3 and other news. Uh, we got affordable healthcare, 
uh last chance here so maybe move in the market you never know uh we got micron memory chip maker reporting this week also t-mobile sprint merge so you've been one of watching that as well uh love to read the ibd each week if you go to page two always looking uh for things that uh might come up as uh reading over this weekend's uh, edition Cole Inc. in a deal with Amazon uh, to uh, take returns for Amazon. Anything to get foot traffic in the door. Walgreens getting the uh, okay to buy out Rite Aid, as well as uh, obviously Toys R Us, we know, are uh, filing for bankruptcy. As an ETF watcher, I want to pay uh, bring your attention to page A14 of the IBD uh, ETFs. Uh, always looking at the ETF winners. Uh, always uh, nice to see the list, uh, but uh, always pay attention to obviously the last column, which is the expense ratio. Don't want to be spending a lot on a uh, on an ETF when the uh, management fee is so high. And so that's why I recommend for those of you who uh, I've talked about him, I follow him, I subscribe, and I uh, invest in the same way as Jason Kelly for the long-term ETFs. Uh, quarterly rebalancing coming up. So if you're interested in the three SIG signal, uh, I highly recommend the Kelly letter. You can see his YouTube channel as well gives a, a good synopsis of his trading strategy, which means you don't have to watch it every single day. You can simply, based on 3% uh, profit uh, each quarter, uh, you simply rebalance the portfolio. Very simple strategy for the, uh, for the ETFs. And find, an ex uh, find yourself an ETF with a low expense ratio, and uh, you won't be throwing a lot of away your management fees. All right, Jedi Traders, that wraps up this week's uh, Technical Momentum Outlook for week 39 coming up. Feel free to stop by at tradingfibs.com or any of my social media outlets. You can obtain more information. My trading mantra, one simple strategy, any market, any chart, any time frame will keep you disciplined. You can find me every day on Twitter here at Trading Fibs. And as always, I leave the crystal ball to the experts. I only watch what's in front of me and on my charts. And as always, I leave my bias at the door when trading. Hey guys, if you're interested in our membership in or just to join in the room, uh, lots of great traders in the room. Again, this is uh, one of those things uh, you wouldn't have heard me talking about MMLs about a year ago, but once uh, some one of our traders uh, brought it up, we started looking at it, we started dissecting it, coming up with some strategies. Found some value in it. Love the merge of the two strategies together, the T3 together with the MML. And uh, as uh, I've shown, uh, there's my T3 moving average. And when you have it, well, that's part of it. I apologize. That's not the chart I wanted to show you. But here's my T3 moving average uh, strategy with the 534 and the 5144. And when you have T3 moving averages in there, you throw those up and then you throw it at MML and you got yourself a strategy that uh, when you're going from low to high, uh, gives you a high probability trend. And then uh, when you're in trend, keeping a runner on even, uh, even better. All right, so anyway, if you're interested in joining us, uh, feel free to email me, uh, David at Trading Fibs. We'll try and get you in the room uh, to see out what is happening. For anybody who's interested in those uh, tutorials on Murray Matt, that's uh, one of my first video. Thank you to all the views here. Check it out. I'll be doing an update soon on some of the things that uh, we've discovered most recently. And uh, for those of you that uh, are interested in participating in the live trading challenge, I am a uh, certified coach uh, for the live trading challenge.com through Infinity Futures. We'll be doing a webinar uh, in October, final date to be determined, but to go ahead and uh, check out the live trading challenge.com. All right, have yourselves a blue zone day wherever you may be. Remember, it's end of Q3 here as uh, we roll into uh, October. Again, perma bears out there already thinking that the market's coming down. Uh, contrary to perma bear consensus and uh, including Jim Rogers out there, I still believe the technical momentum probability is still to the upside until a uh, further notice. Uh, we are obviously. A little bit of divergence in some of our indices as far as where we are at the MML. So you just follow the charts, follow the uh, follow the trend. You'll always remain strong. Uh, so until then, if I've always forgotten anything, I'm sure I'll cover in the room or they're out on uh, Twitter land. And so everybody have yourselves a great week 39. Until then, have yourselves a solid good day. Have yourselves a great night and 
Good trading to you. David from TradingFibs.com.